everyone, welcome back to Infinity Plateau. Today I have a very special episode that I'm quite excited to shoot. In Europe, in autumn, there are short spells of rain which signals mushroom season. Here in Catalonia, people love mushroom picking. It's one of their favorite pastimes, one that locals take very seriously and they're closely guarded secret locations. Fortunately, we have team up with John today I promised to make him some of my mushroom risotto. In exchange, he's going to show us his favorite spots to forage for the delicious fungus. John is the owner of Forest Days, which offers glam camping or glamping experiences, which is just two hours away from Barcelona. So you know what to do when you come here next. So without any further ado, let's go hunt for some shrooms. Hello, John. It's a pleasure to meet you. I'm so excited to be here. Um, could you tell us what you have planned for the day? But before that, could you tell me a little bit about Forest Days? Well, Ash, here we are standing in one of the four camps we have here at Forest Days. So you can hopefully start to get a good sense of what we're all about. So Forest Days is really an experience for nature lovers and um, adventure seekers. So you have the chance to, um, to discover the thrill of sleeping in the middle of this beautiful forest located here in this amazingly scenic pre-Pyrenees um, area of central Catalonia. Um, and still only being an hour and a half from Barcelona. As you can see looking around you, you have lots and lots of your own private forest to explore and relax in in each camp. And then, of course, you get to spend the night in one of our beautiful tents with only a layer of canvas between you and the stars. Well, we think it's just a dream come true for that inner child that lives in all our hearts. So our four old-fashioned bell tents are dotted around in this huge expanse of peaceful forest and they provide you with all the details you need to make your escape into the wild a deeply um, restoring and nourishing experience. That's the power of being submerged in raw nature and well we just really hope you enjoy your time with us here today and as we say to everyone here at Forest Days, welcome to your adventure. When you go mushroom picking, carry with you a wicker basket along with a paper bag. This is to collect any trash or things that don't belong in the forest. We need to take care of our planet. It's actually such a lovely campsite you have here. I'm looking forward to coming with my husband because he loves how, he loves nature, he loves the outdoors and the nature is so accessible and I can see myself plan my visit already. <laughs> but can you tell us what you have planned for today? Yeah, so we're going to go into the forest and we're going to go and see what we can find in terms of mushrooms okay. um, or bullets as we okay. call them here in Catalonia. Um, and what we've got here, um, this is what we managed to gather um, last night. And as it's your first time mushroom hunting, I thought it'd be useful just to show you what it is you're actually looking for. Yes. So I'm just going to very quickly take you through the, um, the types of boulette that you'll find in the forest around here in Forest Days. Okay. Um, and then we'll go and see if we can find some. Sounds good. Okay. So let's start here with probably the, the king. This is the, um, the Robillon which is the, um, I guess, the most well-known and the, um, the most popular um, boulette that you find in Catalonia. Okay. So we'll see if we can find some of those. Next, this is one of its friends, the Pinatel. You can see the Rubion is very orange in colour, whereas this is slightly browner in mm -hmm. colour. Both of these are really sought after boulettes, so we'll keep our eyes open for that. Okay. Now another one, which is also highly sought after, um, is the Lanega. It's not quite as beautiful, slightly slimy, it has slightly mucus on the top. Okay. But underneath it has these wonderful white flesh. Wow. And these are really, really sought after and highly prized. So we'll be keeping an eye out for these Lenegas. Okay. Now, other things that we might find. This is a Fredelique. Um, these tend to come out with the first frosts when things start to get cold. So it's got a very velvety cap on the top. Wow. Either this grey or for the smaller ones, you'll find these really black caps. Okay. And then underneath, again, we can see the, wow. the gill formation. Beautiful. So I'll be looking out for those. Now, for your rice, this mm -hmm. is the most important one. Mm -hmm. We're going to use Camagrox um, to go in your rice. Okay. Now, they come in different sizes and shapes, but you can see why they have the name Yellow Leg. Yeah, um, they're beautiful. So we'll be looking out for those. Okay. Um, and last but not least, this is sometimes called the, the poor person's mushroom, I believe. Okay. Um, the potter perdu, the um, partridge foot, 
and you find quite a lot of these around. They're not so sought after, but they are still quite nice mushrooms. Okay. And finally, La Lingua de Beau, which is called the ox wow. tongue. Which you can see why it's called the ox tongue, with this strange texture wow. underneath. Right. And again, a very sought after mushroom. So we'll see if we can find some of those. Okay. There are lots and lots of other mushrooms um, in the forest, but I think one of the main rules of foraging for mushrooms is that you pick what you know. Okay. So these I know I can identify correctly and safely. Yeah. Because what you find with bullets is that there's always one that looks similar, but mm -hmm. it's not quite the same and it can be dangerous. So mm -hmm. first rule is that we only pick the ones that we can identify. <clears throat> Secondly, um, when we pick them, if we do any tidying up before we put them in our basket, we do it where we find them. We don't take it and tidy it up and throw away the mushroom trimmings in the house. Okay. So that way the trimmings that we take from the mushrooms go back into nature where yeah. we find them. We always put our mushrooms in a wicker basket. Okay. And we always put them this way around. Okay, that so the head's facing down. Exactly. So okay. as we carry them, any spores from the mushroom, because it's a wicker basket, they distribute around the forest. Oh, interesting. So it continues the development of the mushrooms in that area. We also have our knife. Um, there's lots of different um, uh, opinions on whether it's best to cut a mushroom or pull a mushroom. Mm -hmm. We'll be pulling them. Okay. Um, and then we'll be cutting them and tidying them up where we find them. Okay. And putting them in there. So you've got your basket, you've got your knife, we've got our forest. Wow. Oh, looking forward to it. Is that okay? Yeah. Let's go hunting. Yeah. Well, there's a, there's a very famous saying um, in mushroom hunting that all fungus is edible, but some types are only edible once. Um, <laughs> so that's why we have to be very, very careful with our mushrooms. Now, I think in Spain, there, in, in all of Spain, there are 270 something types of fungus, of which I think like six are deadly and 27 will make you very ill. When you say deadly, is it, it, will kill, that, it will kill you. if you eat it, you die? Yeah. Oh, wow. And you're dead. And, if, and the sad thing is, every, every year, in, um, well, in Cat even in Catalonia, every year people do die from um, mushroom poisoning. My gosh. It's just because of where we are, we get, a, we get um, as you can see, we're in a lovely forest of pine trees. We've got oak trees. We've got a, a mixture of different types of pine trees. So the soil's very um, conducive for uh, mushroom growth. And then more importantly, it's all about the rain. Okay. So because we're just at the start of the pre-Pyrenees, so from here it's all uphill to the top of the Pyrenees, that we get that rain at the end of summer, the start of autumn, and that's what drives the growth. Um, and it's very important that the real special specialist mushroom hunters pay very close attention to where it rains in late August and early September. And that's where they'll go down to within a few kilometers. Wow. Because sometimes, for example, we have a huge rainstorm here and half a kilometer away they have nothing. So then that makes this very we're trying to look for mushrooms. Is this one? There. John, can you come and yeah. tell us if this is one? Have you got something? Yeah. Uh, that looks promising. That looks like a Rouvillon. So we just clear the top of it. Put our fingers underneath. Just slowly pull wow. it out. So there we go. We can see it's got this beautiful um, orange color here. Mm -hmm. Um, you do have to watch out so that one of the ones that looks like this but is dangerous mm -hmm. is if you see a, a, like a milky white substance coming out rather than this lovely orange colour. But right. with this orange colour we know we've definitely found one. Okay. So then we take our knife. I'm going to prep your knife. Now, this is the next thing that we have to do to see how good it is because the problem with mushrooms is that everybody likes them. The pigs like them, the mm -hmm. deer like them and unfortunately the little bugs like them as well. So we just cut the bottom of this a little bit. You can see when you see these little holes, mm -hmm. it means that there are bugs inside. But we'll take it with us. Okay. And when we get to the kitchen, we'll clean it up okay. and we'll see how much of the flesh is. And you said place it like this? Like that in the basket. Perfect. Oh, the other way around, sorry. Ah, like this. Yeah, so the, ah, okay. so the spores drop out and then Got drop it. through your basket and then repopulate the area. Got there's it. There's a saying in Catalonia when you're hunting for bullets that if you find one, there's bound to be more. So have a good look Ooh. around. I see one more there. Yeah. Yeah. Do you want to take it out? Okay, so like this? Is it grab? Ooh. Ooh. Oh, wow. Nice. Oh, that looks a really nice one. So again, till here? 
just to start with, just take the very, very end off just so we can oh, see like here. because if, if there's no bugs in it. Oh, that's fantastic. That's actually a perfect one. That has no bugs at all. That's cool. So that's a beautiful one. It's a little bit dry mm -hmm. just because we've had quite hot weather at the moment, but mm -hmm. that's a really good mushroom. Okay. And you use all this to cook as well if you're cooking? You cook everything, yeah. Everything. yeah. Okay. So there we go. Your one first more. two will be on. So well done. <laughs> Is there any rubbish around? <laughs> okay, how about this one? Look at this one. So this is one that I don't know. I don't recognise it from the top. It's not one that I'm familiar with. Therefore, I'm not going to touch it and I'm certainly not going to pick it. Okay. Um, we always say try and identify it first before you pick it so you don't pick randomly. And then yeah. I don't know it, I'm just going to leave it. Okay. So hopefully a more experienced bull attire will come along and say, you don't know what you're missing. <laughs> right down on your hands and knees. So you see there's these big Fredelics here. Yeah. And there's some more in here. But then if you look closely, and the more you look, the more you'll the see. Ones. You'll see these black ones here, and even smaller ones growing up down here. So these are all Fredelix, but you have to be very careful, because otherwise... So this next bit is a bit of a cheat. <laughs> no, I say that because we're going to go and have a look for some Lenegas. But Lenegas, they come back in the same place every year. It's not like other mushrooms that can appear in different things. Typically, you'll always, they'll always appear in a similar area. Okay. But Lenegas are always in the same, exactly the same spot. Okay. So everybody knows where their local Leneguera is, which okay. is the word for it. So we're going to go and see if there's any here at the moment. Monty always says that when you're looking for mushrooms, you should think of being a mushroom and think, where would a mushroom like to grow? <laughs> Somewhere nice and secluded. This one? How about all these? These are the same as we saw before. Uh -huh. I don't know exactly what these are, but I do know that if you look underneath here, and again, we need to be quite careful that we don't step on them. Ooh. We're now in the middle of a Leneguera. Mm. Okay. So these are the ones, these are, to some people, these are the best mushrooms that you can find in Catalonia. Wow. So you can see there's a, there's a little baby one here. There's another one here, another one here. And then if we look underneath here, there's another one there. I find they're very, they've got a lot of uh, mica mucus on top. Mm -hmm. So they're quite slippery. But like we did with the other ones, just take your fingers down till you can find where the end of the mm -hmm. stem is. And then pull them out like that. That's absolutely wow. beautiful. It's a really beautiful mushroom. Again, we just clean the top off. Slide, slide. Baby. wild time let's pluck some for our risotto you know all over catalonia there's wild rosemary and thyme everywhere so nice you're walking through the forest and surrounded by Oof, that's beautiful let's take some more because i love thyme it's my favorite herb So beautiful. This is uh, uh, okay. Well, I don't know. On to the next stop. Okay, John, this has been fun. I think we have plenty of mushrooms for me to make you the mushroom risotto. Take us back to the campsite and let's get cooking. Sounds good. Okay. Let's carry our goods, Indian style. <gasps> uh, 
let's first prep all our ingredients. Hydrate the dried porcini mushrooms in hot water for 5 to 10 minutes. Drain the liquid and keep it aside and chop the mushrooms into small pieces. Come on, let's cook! In a pan, add some olive oil, chopped shallot and garlic and cook for a few minutes until they soften. Add chopped porcini mushrooms, a small cube of butter and cook for another few minutes. Add some thyme. Here I added fresh thyme from the forest but you can add dry thyme if you want. Now it's time to add the rice. For risotto, I always use arborio rice. Let the rice cook for one minute, then deglaze with white wine and cook until the wine evaporates. Next, it's time to add the hot liquid or stock one ladle at a time. Add the porcini mushroom liquid which gives an incredible flavor and once it cooks off, add the next ladle of liquid. Here I'm using a mixture of chicken and vegetable stock. When you're cooking risotto, it's very important to be patient. Add one ladle of stock at a time and constantly stir. Once the rice soaks up all the liquid, only then add the next ladle of stock. When the rice is 5 minutes from being al dente or almost cooked, add the mushrooms. When to add the mushrooms will depend on what mushrooms you are using. Since these yellow leg mushrooms cook very fast, I add them right at the end. If you are using other mushrooms which need longer to cook, cook them before adding the rice. All that's left to add is loads of parmesan cheese. Let's add another bowl because there's no such thing as too much parmesan. Don't forget the big cube of butter. Test for salt at this stage and add if it needs any. Food's ready. Okay. You see yours? Sprinkle with freshly chopped parsley. and some extra parmesan on top and it's ready to be served. So we're finishing our table setting and then I'm going to serve them the mushroom risotto and have an intimate candlelight dinner. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. This has been one of the most memorable experiences for me. Do check out Forest Days and you know what to do next when you come to Barcelona. Their link is in the description box below. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on all my future recipes and adventures like this. And I'll see you next week.